Hey everybody, Chris with 911 Card Games, back again for more Earthborn Rangers. I am still uh, wrapping up that cold that our son gave us for Christmas. Uh, feeling better, but still very congested. So again, I'll try to keep the uh, snuffling and coughing to a minimum as I can, and go from there. So starting out here, we're on day 11. Looking at the campaign tracker, we're still in the downpour weather, and there is no campaign entry for today. So, when last we left, we did come down from Greenbrier Ridge uh, over to Stoneweaver, or is it Greenbrier Knoll, after we uh, proved how tough we are by spending the night there. Uh, and we're coming down the ravine to Stoneweaver Bridge because our goal is to get up here to the biological outpost. Uh, I did not, even though I camped, I did not make any changes to my deck. Um, the one reward card I got doesn't really play into uh, play into solo play very well, so didn't find a spot in my deck. All right, so let's take a look here. We have arrived. At Stoneweaver Bridge, which is a location, water, and trail traded, has a, a presence value of 1, a progress value of 3 per ranger, and on refresh, you may choose a path card to remain exhausted. That seems very nice. Alright, so let's read our arrival story. Uh, let me get to a 26. The silver fin flows cheerily beneath the great bridge, which was coaxed from the very earth and shaped by the stone weavers in a display of great discipline. The shapers from the monastery spent several years to manifest this marvel and only finished the work last spring. Since then, you can't walk 20 paces in Spire without overhearing someone talking about how wonderfully useful it is. Right, uh, arrival setup. Search the path deck for the next feature and discard it. And then the lead ranger draws one path card. Right, let's look for the next feature. Uh, that is a web wall, so not going to be sad to see that go. Shuffle this up. Let's draw our path card. It is a triptofolium. So we've got that. Let's draw our hand. All right, Boundary Sensor, Oru, Healing Touch, Hydra Lens, Goggles. Another Oru and an Eagle Eye. Uh, don't need two Orus. I don't think I need another Healing Touch right now. Oh, uh, and that does remind me, uh, real quick, for the Invasion mission. Uh, I got that on day 9, so I am on day 11, so I'm still in... Uh, days one to two, so I'm still just, we'll just run into them, uh, to the uh, reclaimers in ruin locations. All right, so I'm gonna not do those two. Um, honestly, I'm just kind of going to a location, so I don't even really need much in the way of scouting at the moment. I don't think so. I'm gonna. Pitch the goggles. I'm going to keep Eagle Eye, though, and I'm going to draw three more. So my Vaulting Rod, Riri, and a Walk With Me. All right. Well, I got my two main companions out, and then hopefully at some point, Quiet will show up. All right, so that took care of all the arrival and the deck setup. So now we start the top of a new turn, so we draw a path card. It is a skittish opalion. All right. So let's start. Let's start this out. Let's get our re re out. And then we're going to get Oru out. 
Uh, we're going to have Riri ping the Opalion for one. I think we're going to just, uh, no, you know what, we're going to have Oru push this along. Uh, actually, it doesn't really matter. So, we're not going to have Oru shove it along. None of its uh, challenge effects trigger. Doesn't matter whether it's within reach or along the way. And realistically, Riri is just going to scare it off next turn. So I think I'm going to try a Traverse Test. One, two, three. I'm going to exhaust my roll card to dodge this card. This is a Presence of Zero, so it does not fatigue me. So I am a three versus a one. Uh, minus one, so I succeed, but only to progress. And now, challenge effects. I get fatigued one by the downpour. And then Skittish Opaline says, If there's no web wall in play, exhaust this being and go find one. Ugh. That's a shame. All right, let's see if there's another one in the deck before I take the one out of the... Yep, there is one here. Well, that is a shame. That means I, I didn't get enough progress to uh, leave this place, and now I've got an obstacle out, so... Ah, well. Uh, I'm not going to try to remember my training. We're going to call that a rest. So we're going to ready everything up. Get our energy back. And draw a card, which is my Paratrepsis Whistle. All right, we're getting a new deck card. It's another skittish Opalion. That's not great. All right. First things first, we're going to get a boundary sensor down. Comes in with four sensors on it. Riri is going to do another damage onto this Opalion, which has it go run off. Oru is going to push this Opalion over there and put two progress on it. I am now going to try a traverse test on the web wall using a boundary sensor. So I've got three versus one. Minus one, so I succeed with two progress. That is enough to clear it. Okay, now I'm going to do the blue challenge effect. Nothing, nothing, nothing on the missions. And the Skittish Shop Alliance says if there's no hazard in play, which Tryptofolium is not, uh, shuffle this being into the path deck. All right, so the Skittish Shop Alliance got skittish and left. All right, uh... I guess I'm going to spend one focus for my Paratrepsis Whistle. Could come in handy later. Who knows? Comes in with three calls. Um, I don't really want to scout anything. I don't need to draw any more cards because really all I'm trying to do is leave here. Because I'm trying to get to the biological outpost to uh, complete my journey mission and then warn them of the uh, upcoming invasion by the Verdessians. Uh, eh. Let's try to pluck some tryptofolium. Uh, so, awareness plus knowledge. I'm not committing any other icons, just the two awareness energy. So, two versus one. I succeed. So, I get to add one harm to this being. I get to soothe one fatigue. 
which is quiet, nice. And draw a card, which is another boundary sensor. And now challenge effect says, I get fatigued. Yep, suffer one fatigue. All right. Um, I don't have the money to get quiet out. Nothing else I really want to do, so we are going to uh, we're going to rest up. Still can't travel. And draw a new path card. It is Ben Amon, Swift Pilot. So he comes in with 87. A shadow skims over your head and you duck, thinking you're about to be attacked by a hungry Irix. You look up in relief to see the shape of Ben Amon's custom-made glider, the Swift, passing overhead. It lands gently in a clearing a short distance away. As you approach, you see Ben Amon... Emerge from the cockpit, stretch his legs, then check something on the other side of his vehicle. Hello there, he says, looking up from his work. I'm on an errand for the Elder Thrush, but if you're in need of assistance, maybe I can give you a ride. Clear Ben with progress to board the Swift. Oh, clear Ben with getting your Ranger token on him to board the Swift. And so presence value of one, harm value of four, clears with your Ranger token on him. And then focus plus connect versus three to convince Ben of the urgency of your mission to move your ranger token to it. Oh. Unfortunately, I don't have great stats there. That is... Focus is the... Uh, definitely the dump stat for me in this one. So... Um... Uh, yeah, I'm going to try to do the tryptofolium test again. Two to one. Zero. So I get to soothe one fatigue, which is an insightful, and draw one ranger card, which is versatile. And then this gets a second damage on it, which is enough to take care of it. Now looking at the red challenge effect, nothing from the weather, nothing here, nothing in the missions. Uh, ben Amon, if there's an active predator, nope. All right. So, I could potentially... Seems like kind of a waste, though. Eh, we're going to do it anyway. So we're going to do... Uh... Oh, no, that won't do me any good anyway. So, okay. I was going to do um, do a traverse test and then play walk with me to, cl to uh, put progress on him, but he doesn't have any progress. It is literally only that. So, all right. <laughs> We're going to try it. We're going to do our one focus. We're going to spend a walk with me and a versatile. So we're three versus three, straight up. Plus one. Whoop, whoop. So that is a success. Four versus three. Somehow I managed to stay focused enough for this. So I cleared him. Well, I got my ranger token on him, and that clears him. Uh, real quick, red challenge effect, the red crest effect, nothing happens. So, all right. After some discussion, Ben gestures towards the Swift. Climb aboard, he says. The elders will all ask me to run these supplies across the valley as quickly as possible. But the winds are favorable today. I should be able to make your journey a little easier and be back to Lone Tree by sundown. Now, where to? You may immediately proceed to the travel phase of the round. If you do, you can travel to any location within two paths. Use the train type of the last path you crossed over. If you choose to travel in this way, discard the current challenge card and do not resolve the remainder of this test. Oh, I didn't have to do that. If 
I had anything. If you choose not to travel, discard Ben and resolve the remainder of the test as normal. Well, I am going to choose to travel. So, I'm at the uh, Stoneweaver Bridge, and I want to get to Biological Outpost, which is 1-2. So Ben gets to take me right there. And we're going through the woods. So I guess I gotta set up for the woods here. So let me get that going. Alright, we have made it back to... The biological outpost through the woods, and because we arrived here, the journey mission says arrived at the attached location. Read entry 150. Right, so entry 150, you pick your place, and the biological outpost. When you reach the biological outpost, you are pleasantly surprised when you find not only Sirisana Mir, the valley's self proclaimed resident biologist, but Zek Sal the stilt horse courier, making a pot of tea at the outpost's lone saw coil. Zek recognizes you from ranger training, and both he and Sirisana listen to mounting alarm, listen in mounting alarm to your experience with the reclaimers. Uh, if you are currently on Watcher in the Brush, Trail of Vines, or Deeper Motives, go to 13.1.13a. I am not, so I get to go to B. Uh, if I completed the sensor network mission, which I did not... If you completed the Secret Invasion mission with all three bubbles checked off, unfortunately, I did not. Otherwise, go to 1.14. Uh, if you have Watcher in the Brush, Trail of the Vines, or Deeper Motives, complete it. I do not. Zek finishes his tea and stands. Well, I suppose I'd best get up to Lone Tree and let Elder Thrush know about all this. He heads for the door and shouts to his still horse, Come on, Nell, quit snacking. We've got a ride ahead of us. You spend a few hours at the biological station resting after your hike, while Sirisana continues her studies. As the light is starting to fade, Sirisana's apprentice, Tila Jakara returns from a day of field studies with a rucksack full of lichen and an armful of branches for the fire pit. Sirisana gets her up to speed on events, and the two immediately fall into a lively debate about what, if anything, to do about the reclaimers. They're clearly an invasive species, Sirisana says. There is no prior record of these biomelds in the valley. Our ancestors encountered these reclaimers in the time before we settled here, but that was long ago. They're yet another biomail run amok, fulfilling some esoteric purpose that's at odds with the natural world. We don't, we don't know, we don't know that for certain, Chiella re retorts. Even if they are fulfilling some outmoded purpose, they've had centuries to become part of the ecosystem. Look at the R Relgar beasts. They were once viewed as an invasive pest. But over time, we've learned how critical they are to the ecology of Ver Verdessa, or take growling weevils. At this point, you hesitantly interrupt to point out that what these beings are may matter less than why they have suddenly arrived, and whether or not anything can be done about it. Both Sirisana and Tiela stare at you like the idea never occurred to them. If the rangers have befriended the Verdessian, which I have, go to 114a. They must have a, they must have a nest, Tiella says. Somewhere they congregate. To learn more, you're going to have to find it. You tell them about the vision Nal experienced before the Verdessian disappeared, that she saw the nest but couldn't see exactly where it was. You relay Nal's description: climbing vines, a collection of ruins, and a river. That sounds like the alluvial ruins to me, says Siri, is Sirisana. Of course, Tiella says excitedly. If the reclaimers are drawn to the ruins for some reason, what better place for a nest than the largest ruin site in the valley? Well, what are you waiting for? Sarasana asks incredulously. Go to the nest and learn all you can about the reclaimers. Ancestors be your guide. Be swift. Complete the journey biological outpost mission and gain the into the nest mission. All right, let's into the nest. 
travel into the Reclaimer Nest to study what they are doing in the valley. So we have to go to the Alluvial Ruins and use 1.16 instead of the normal entries for this location. And when a Reclaimer Grub is cleared, place one progress on this mission. If you have a three progress on this mission, read 1.17. All right. So, real quick. So, I'm at the biological outpost. Where is the alluvial ruins? Probably not close. Oh, there we are. All the way down here. Okay, so we're there, we're going to have, because we don't have any way to cross, I wish we had a way to cross the river, because that'd be quick, but one, two, three, four treks. Okay, however, we first have to take care of our arrival at the Biological Outpost. Biological Outpost is a location, a, let's say here, a forest and a ranger station has a presence value of one progress threshold of four per ranger and a blue mountain challenge effect that says if there are no active predators or prey a nearby animal is drawn to the biological lures search the path deck for the nearest predator or prey or for the next predator or prey and put it into play all right so showing up here we got to read entry 22. Many years ago, the rangers strung a blind between several towering trees, large enough that half a dozen people could live in cozy comfort. In the time since, the blind was replaced by a multi-story building with space enough to accommodate a small village. Here, the locals devoted to biological research study the valley's wildlife, especially focusing on the area's unique biomounds. So rival setup, lead ranger searches the path deck for the next predator play and puts it into play. <laughs> All right, so that is, nope, overgrown thicket. Well, there we go. We got a predator. <laughs> Haven't been in the woods for a while. Haven't uh, seen a prowling wolfhound. All right. <clears throat> uh, so now we go to the refresh phase, so. Get that taken care of, draw a card, a healing touch, and now we draw another path card. It is a ranger cache. Ooh. Might have to check that out. All right, uh, it's my turn. I think we're going to have Oru mosey that prowling wolfhound away. Pop a couple progress on it. I am going to spend two fitness to get out quiet. So now my menagerie is complete. And... This is a Awareness plus Exploration 2. Is it gone? You know, I'm going to pitch my Vaulting Rod. And so I'm a three versus two on that. That is a zero. So I succeed. So I get to move my ranger token to this feature. Then you may search your deck for a gear and equip it. Uh, so I get to move my ranger token here. I get to search my deck for a gear and equip it. Let's see, camel weave cloak, hydra lens goggles, photoscopic headset, or sill sketchbook. 
can't do, don't want to do the vaulting rod. I got one more copy of my deck, but that would kick out something. So I think, I think I'm going to put the sketchbook down. Um, the sketchbook uh, has turned out to be incredibly useful at exhausting uh, obstacle cards to allow me to get around things. <laughs> um, so we will put it into play, and I am fully geared up at the moment. I've got five gear slots available and taken up. All right, and this does clear the ranger cache. All right, let's... Um, we're going to use a boundary sensor. We're going to exhaust my seeker card to dodge the wool hound. So that we can try a fitness two versus one. Oh, I forgot to check the uh, challenge icon effects. Um, this is only if there is not, and that's the only thing that would have triggered. So zero. So I succeed with two progress. Uh, blue mountain effect. Nothing happens because this is only if there is not a predator or prey out. Or specifically an active predator prey, and that is still active. All right, so that is that. Uh, nothing else I'm going to do. So let's refresh. Can't travel yet. All right, and draw a card. My camel weave cloak. Okay. New path card. Ooh, Caustic Mulcher. This one's a rough one. All right, so it is a being. Biomeld. Three presence, six harm, nine connect. Beings attached to this being do not ready. And then if a ranger token is on it, you cannot travel. And rangers on this biomeld cannot move, be moved except for by this test. Okay, well, that is uh, not a great thing there. All right, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to spend two energy to get my camel weave cloak out. That does mean that I'm kicking out the whistle. I am now going to, uh, I am going to do a traverse test. I'm going to exhaust my uh, seeker card to dodge, doesn't really matter, I will dodge the caustic mulcher and then I will, uh, I will use a charge off the camel weave cloak to ignore the fatigue off the prowling wolfhound. So I am a four versus one. Minus one, I succeed with a total progress of, uh, effort of three, so this goes up to five. Now red challenge effects. That's not great. All right, let's look at the wolfhound first. If you have three or four, mo uh, three or more fatigue, exhaust this being and suffer one injury, I do not. Add one harm to each being attached to this biomeld. Each ranger with their ranger token on this biomeld suffers one injury. Okay, well, nobody is attached to it, so. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's try it. We are going to do the sketchbook test. I'm going to do two awareness. And I'm going to throw an insightful down. So I'm going to try to sketch the prowling wolfhound. So three versus two. Zero, I succeed. So I get to add sketches equal to that creature's presence. So that is two more. So 
I get to go up to four. And then if I succeed at a test where I committed this, I can suffer one fatigue to add it back to your hand. I will. Uh, red challenge effect. I don't have three or more fatigue. That's just one. And there's nobody attached to this, so nothing happens there. All right. Um, nothing else I particularly want to do. So we are going to rest. I do have enough progress to travel, so I am going to choose to travel. Again, uh, I'm currently at the biological outpost. I need to get down here, so I am, since I don't have a boat, I am going to have to come down to Mound of the Navigator and then over. So I am going to go Mound of the Navigator through the woods. And get that set up momentarily. Alright, we have arrived at the Mound of the Navigator. From the pillars of rock known as the Mound of the Navigator, you can see for miles in all directions. Many centuries ago, the Estians cultured an arboretum at the summit of the mound and carved the narrow switchback trail that leads there. As you approach, a flock of dark-feathered birds lifts into the sky, leading your eye out into the valley and into the distant mountains below, or beyond. Right, so Mound of the Navigator is a location, a mountain, and a trail. It is not a ruin, so I don't have to add those biomelds in there. Presence of two, uh, progress threshold of four per ranger, and it has zero routes on it. And then it has a test, focus plus exploration against a threshold of two to analyze the paths ahead to add one route to this location. And then response, when you tra travel, add two progress to your destination for each route on this location. Oh, so you, you scout out the trails and then you, when you arrive at your next destination, you already have progress on there, so... You do that a couple of times, you do it right, you can just effectively just kind of travel right away after the next one. All right, so we already read it. So arrival setup, search the path deck for the next feature and put it into play. All right, that is going to be... Nope. Oh no, that is. Overgrown Thicket is a feature, darn it. It is a flora and an obstacle. All right. All right, and now we reset everything. Draw. Oh, get our energy back. Draw a ranger card, healing touch, and then a path card. We have a prowling wolfhound. All right. Uh, first things first. We'll go chase off the prowling wolfhound. Move them along the way and add two progress to it. Next, I think we're just going to try to uh, traverse the obstacle. So we'll just we'll just do that. We'll just do three three versus one. Zero. So I succeed with. Three effort, so I get to put three progress here, which is enough to clear it. Right, uh, Blue Mountain Challenge Effect doesn't come into play. Mm. Unfortunately, that's that focus test, which I'm notoriously awful at. So, I've got a boundary sensor that I could do, but... No real point in that, so... Alright. Um... Let's see here. Do I want an eagle eye or do I want a sketch? I'm still doing really good on on deck size. Hmm. 
Um, yeah, let's try to Eagle Eye. So I'll spend one for Eagle Eye, so I get to scout three path cards, then draw one. One, two, three. I get a Wool Hound, a Wool Hound, and a Sitka Buck. Well, I don't really want any of those. So these are all going to go on the bottom. And let's see what we get off the top blind. Ugh, the Caustic Muncher followed me. Uh, all right, well, that, that, that was a bad decision on my part, I guess. Um, I mean, I could try to connect with something. Let's see here. I actually don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to get rid of the, the Prowling Wolfhound because if a yellow sun comes up, it says, go attach an active being to, uh, to the Caustic Mulcher. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to throw that Wolfhound in front of the thing <laughs> instead of one of my guys, so... Um, yeah, I... I get fatigued if I try that. Yeah. Yeah, there's no point. I'm just gonna end my turn, folks. I'm gonna rest. Can't travel. Refresh energy and cards. Draw a card into a bold. And now path card. It is a sit kabuck. All right, we are going to try to draw the Sitka Buck in Sill's sketchbook. So it is two versus one, minus one. So I do succeed, so I get to add sketches equal to threshold. Okay, now yellow sun. I get fatigued by one. Uh, nothing from mission wise now along the way so I get to choose which order that I do this in uh, Ready a prowling wolf how that doesn't matter and this says if There's another act of being exhausted and attached to this bio meld if not move your uh, Move your token to this bio meld so We're gonna put the the wool hound underneath it right and Sitka Buck says if there is another active Sitka Buck there is not all right we are going to we are going to traverse so we're going to spend three and boundary sensor I really, yeah, with the caustic mulcher out here, I want to get the heck out of here. So I'm going to throw in a bold as well. So I'm rocking a six versus a two. I'm going to exhaust my uh, roll card to dodge that card, and I will take one fatigue from the buck. So I'm a six versus a two. Zero, I succeed. Six progress. Now red crest. So add one harm to each being attached to the bio meld. Uh, that's exhausted so it doesn't trigger. If there's an active sick Cado, nope. All right. Um, nothing else I want to do. So we are going to rest and we are going to travel. We are going to uh, 
Take our way from Mound of the Navigator to Stoneweaver Bridge. And we are coming in through the ravine again. So, you get that set up. All right, back again at Stoneweaver Bridge. Since I already read the uh, flavor text a little while ago, I'm not going to do it again. Arrival setup, search the path deck for the next feature and discard it. Nope. Talus Cave has been discarded. Right now we ready everything up. Draw a ranger card, Hydralens goggles, and draw a new path card, which is Nick to Bats. Comes in with two bats on it. <laughs> All right, let's have uh, Riri just go after them to start with. Let's try. We're going to try to connect to them. So two. I'll commit a Hydra Lens Goggle. So two versus three. Or three versus two. Sorry. Zero. I succeed. So I get three progress on it. Uh, red, red Crest. Nothing. And then Uru is going to move that along and add to progress, which puts it up to five, which clears out the bats. All right, we are going to spend one to get another copy of Boundary Sensors down. And now we are going to... Uh, traverse here using a boundary sensor, so I am a three versus one. I succeed with four uh, with a plus one, so total progress of four. Red challenge effect, nothing there, and I have to reshuffle. So I'm gonna actually. At some point here, i got to figure out, because I am motoring through the valley today. Uh, so through the map, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. They've got uh, little squares in these. Each square uh, accounts for one square mile. So I believe started here. Now granted, we got a hitched a ride up here, but now we're walking back, going here, here, here. Uh, down to here, you know, that sort of thing to uh, see how many miles I would have actually traversed during this day. But that's something for another day. All right. Um, I was going to try to draw a card, but I don't know if I need to. I don't have a lot in my hand right now, but so far I'm just trying to traverse, so I think I'm doing good. So I think we're just going to rest. We're going to rest and we're going to choose to travel. So we are now going to travel to Meadow via the Grasslands. Back again. So once again, we have arrived in Meadow. So arrival set up. The grasses in this part of the valley rise so tall that you don't realize you've reached Meadow until the path suddenly opens, revealing several humble cottages centered around the stump of a fallen dolewood. A herd of ironwood wool sheep tend to the grass. A shepherd stands nearby, casually watching the sheep. He waves. If you're here for the festival, you're early, he says. Pretty soon this place will be full of people from all over the valley, and sometimes beyond. There's food, drink, music, and dancing. If there's one thing we know how to do in Meadow, it's how to throw a party. 
An iron wool sheep pauses to give you a look, then quietly goes back to its grazing. One of these days, I should try to actually come here during one of the days they're doing their harvest festival. Uh, so, rival setup, we have to go get the Whispering Fields and put it into play. So basically, the Whispering Fields is whenever you draw a path card, attach it face down to this feature instead, and then you can go pick one through a test. And honestly, I, I don't care. So, when this feature enters play, draw a path card. Okay, now we refresh everything. Um, since I'm an undaunted seeker and I can just avoid a card when I'm doing tests, um, I, I don't care. And since I'm just trying to leave, it doesn't matter to me. Draw a card and do another copy of Riri. And now we draw another. It goes face down there. Oops. Uh, we are going to, one, two, three, and we are going to dodge that, which is currently a presence of two. I'm not going to do boundary sensor because I don't care if I'm here for a turn or two, because I don't have to worry about path cards, so. All right. Uh, so I am a three versus a one. Zero. So I succeed with a total progress of three. A red crest, nothing happens. All right. Um, I don't. Uh, there is literally nothing else I want to do here, so we're gonna rest. And uh, let's see. What is this challenge pack? Put a random. Oh, yeah. I know. Probably want to do as few tests around here as possible. Because the sun effect says put one of these randomly into play. And if it's an ambush, suffer an injury. So, yeah, I don't like that. So let's get out of here soon. All right. So we are going to rest. I don't have enough to travel. Draw another copy of Quiet. And now we draw another path card. Which goes there. So there's now a presence of three. I'm going to do the same thing I did last turn. Exhaust to dodge that card. And then do a three versus one. I succeed. Total effort of three. So I'm up to six progress. Blue mountain. Nothing triggers off of that. So I rest and travel. This is a quick run through the valley right now. So. So we are at the meadow. We need to come down to rings of the moon. I have my choice. I can either go rings of the moon an archaeological outpost over. I can go to the Concordant Ziggurats. And that. Um, Let's see here. What am I doing on card? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I still have eight cards in my deck. So that's approximately seven more turns. Seven, eight more turns. Assuming I don't get fatigued. So I know this is a ruin. I don't know if this is. But I really don't like the grassland. Because grassland has ambush predators in it. So I think we're going to take the safer route. And go down through the valley into the rings of the moon. So that's what I'm going to do. So I shall return shortly. All right, here we are back again at the Rings of the Moon, a location and a ruin. So I have shuffled the three Biomeld Reclaimers into the uh, path deck. Rising up from a series of small hillocks along the edges of the meadow's vast prairie, the large towers each support a massive loop of dull gray metal and ceramics. Some have broken into half or quarter circles, but a few are still intact. The locals in Meadow say that if you go to the edges of the valley with a scope and look back through all the loops at once, you'll see another world in a reality just sideways from your own. Almost every artificer who inspected the rings, however, believes they are part of a vast and non-functional sensor network. Alright, so on arrival, I draw a path card. That is Tryptifolium. Alright, and now we reset ourselves. 
Draw a card. Into an insightful. It's top of the round, so we draw another path card. It is Talus Cave. Uh, goes along the way. Presence of one. Eight harm, four uh, progress. And while your ranger token is on this feature, you do not suffer fatigue from weather. Uh, awareness plus uh, exploration threshold two to shelter in the dark recesses to exhaust this feature and move your ranger token to it. All right. Well, as always, we're running. Speed run. Speed run through the valley. So we are going to one, two, three, and throw in a boundary sensor. I'm going to exhaust to avoid that. And tryptofolium is a zero, so it doesn't matter. So four versus one. Minus one. I succeed, but only three, unfortunately. Right, blue mountain nothing in the weather if there are no if there is no active being exhaust this feature and then search the path deck for the next being and put it into play uh but i have three active beings right there so i don't have to worry about it uh tryptofolium says if there's an active prey which there is not all right so i'm not getting out of here this turn unfortunately um i don't really want to pick the tryptofolium i was thinking about doing that but i don't want to burn through my deck man I wish I had some other way to uh, to add progress to things because I think my goal is to get to the get to the final ruins location and just camp there so let's see here how many spots away am I one two uh, I've got seven cards in my deck. Yeah, that doesn't seem terrible. Um, yeah, let's try it. Let's just try to. Pluck the Tryptofolium. So two versus a one. Minus one, I succeed. So I do one harm to it. I get to soothe one fatigue, which is a walk with me. Could be useful. And then I get to draw a card, which is another copy of the sketchbook, which has very good icons, so that's okay. I clean up my play area here a little bit. Uh, blue mountain, nothing, nothing comes into play. So, so I think we're just gonna rest. Yeah, really wish Ur's test was not a fitness test <laughs> to pet him. Really, do I need that much fitness to to pet a dog so that I could? I suppose I could slow down and take my time, but I don't know. I'm just, I just. It seems like it's such, the story seems like it's so critical and everything's going to pot if I don't, that I just feel like I have to try to speed through this thing as fast as possible, so. All right, so we're going to rest. Uh, I don't have enough to travel, so ready everything up. Draw a card into a headset, photoscopic headset, and draw a path card. A web wall. All right, well, that is an obstacle, and that's why I have Sill's sketchbook. So we're going to exhaust and spend one sketches to exhaust a path card of Presence X. It has a presence of one. Goodbye. We are going to do a fitness test, exhausting to dodge the cave. So we are a three versus a one. I succeed, a uh, total effort of three, so progress goes up to six. And now, yellow sun. I suffer fatigue. 
And then that flips over to Gathering Storm. Uh, the cave, there are not, if there are Nyctabats in play, there are not. So I don't have to worry about that. Yep. Um, yeah, I don't want to thin my deck out any more there, so... I guess we're just gonna... We're just gonna rest. Yeah, we're, we're just running through the Rings of the Moon on our way to uh, the Archaeological Outpost. So... Uh, Chow Rings of the Moon, we're on to the next one. And we're back at the Archaeological Outpost. Solaro Manko, the Valley's preeminent archaeologist, set up this outpost many years ago with the help of his father. Since then, he has spent precious little time here, instead using it as a storage facility for many of the most interesting artifacts he's recovered during his expeditions. Inside, you find tables covered with neatly cataloged and carefully arranged artifacts and several notebooks containing the observations of Solaro Mako and his colleagues. Right, and so Pathic Assembly, I made sure that the Arcology Sinkhole is one of them. Arrival Setup, Lead Ranger, search the Path Deck for the next feature and put it into play. Uh, okay, that is Tryptifolium, and that is a feature. So, there we go. So now we do the refresh. Uh, we add two clouds to the Gathering Storm. Get our energy back. Refresh our cards. Draw a card. Another Uru. And then we're at the top, so we draw another path card, which is Loose Boulders. Ugh, don't like that feature. All right, so that is an obstacle. That's a problem. And I can do Focus plus Explore against a threshold of two to inch your way along the rocks and move my Ranger token here, and since I'm the only player, it would clear out. All right. All right, so let's do this thing. So we're going to do a focus. We're going to commit a photoscopic headset. Luckily, I have a lot of cards in my hand. All right. So I am a three versus a two. That is the best I can do. I don't have a versatile in my hand, so I can't do anything about that. Three versus two on a focus test. Zero. I succeed. So I get to move my ranger token here, then move this feature to within reach of another ranger, but I don't. All the ranger tokens are on it, so it clears. And now the red challenge effect. There's nothing with a red challenge effect because I cleared that thing out, thankfully. All right, let us, let's try to get out of here. Basic traverse test. Thrown in a boundary sensor. So, four effort, four against one. That is a zero. So, I succeed with four progress. Perfect. Um, yeah, I think I'm just about near the end of the day. I don't, camping really doesn't do me anything, honestly, so. So, yeah, I don't think I'm going to bother to camp. I'll just fatigue out. That's fine. So, I'm going to be done. And I am going to choose to travel. I am over at the archaeological outpost. I'm going to travel through the mountain pass to the alluvial ruins. All right, we have made it to the alluvial ruins. Location, a ruin, and a trail. It has a presence value of 2, progress value of 4 per ranger. Blue challenge effect, if you are interacting with the water feature, you see something up from upriver. 
Place the top card of the Detritus deck on top of the Path deck. The Detritus deck, you might be asking, wondering what it is. So Path deck assembly, shuffle the Grassland, Lakeshore, and Old Growth sets together and then set them next to the Path deck. This is the Detritus deck. So I have done that. I will put that right over here. Now we do need to read the uh, flavor, the which per into the nest we use 1.16 instead of the normal entries. You've heard the ancient moss covered and vine shaped detritus of the alluvial ruins described as peaceful, but as you approach, a shiver runs up your spine. You hear a soft rustling, like hundreds of reeds rubbing together in the distance. You move quietly through the ruins and find a gap to peek through. There, in the heart of the ruins, you can see dozens of reclaimers milling about, and you see several bulbous sacks adhered to every surface. It looks like you found the reclaimer nest. Uh, it says, ignore the invasion setup for this location. Instead, search the general set for three reclaimer seekers and shovel them into the path deck. That is the invasion instruction, so did that. Uh, then, after setup, search the general set for a recl Reclaimer Polyp and put it into play. So the Reclaimer Polyp here is a feature, Biomeld, Reclaimer, uh, Presence of 3, Harm Threshold of 2, uh, Progress of 6, uh, Clear via Harm, the Polyp bursts open, search the general set for two Reclaimer Grubs, and a Red Crest Challenge effect to add one harm to this feature. That's important because the Into the Nest mission says when a re Reclaimer Grub is cleared, place one progress on this mission, and then when you have three progress on this mission, proceed to the next entry. So I've got to try to actually pop the polyps and get the grubs out. Um, unfortunately, it's not a being, so I have no way to do harm to something that is not a being. So, we'll deal with that, but in the meantime, I need to follow the arrival instructions, which also says draw one card from the Detritus deck. And that is a Harvester Ant Hill. It's an obstacle. Uh, presence of X, where X is equal to the number of harm on this feature. Four harm, six progress. And, yep. All right, and now we are at the refresh phase. So, first things first. We get four clouds on Gathering Storms, so it flips back over. To a downpour. Ready everything up. Bring our energy back. Draw a card, which is a versatile. And now we draw a path card. And that is a Shale Scree. Feature, hazard, obstacle. Oh, man. I got uh, two obstacles and a giant polyp that I can't do anything about. I have two cards in my deck. Um... Yeah, I don't think. So I'm looking at this. So the polyp gives me um, two grubs. If I clear it, I get to put two on here. But I need three. And then this will go into the discard. So then that will go into the discard pile. And unless I recycle the path deck, I won't be able to get this again. So realistically, I have to come in here, grab two, get out, come back in to have this spawn again, pop it, and then try to get two. Ugh. 
And progress won't be kept on this between missions, so anything I do on this won't make any bit of difference. Uh, oh, Reclaimer Polyp, why do you have to be a feature? All right, let's see if I can at least pop one and pop it open, even if I can't get to it tonight. Um, I can at least see what the grubs look like. Get a little bit of a intel for the next day. So, Sil sketchbook. Uh, Sil, we are going to try to sketch the scale, the shale scree. So, two versus two. Zero, I succeed. So I get to put two progress or two sketches on that. Blue mountain. That is not what I want. I am not interacting with a water feature. Uh, shale Scree, move this card to within reach, and it fatigues you. Oh. One, two. Move each being that is within reach to another area. Oh. Oh. These are all... My companions are all going there. All right, let's take a look at the Harvester Ant Hill. If there is an active Hungry Scroff, there is not. Uh, let's try to traverse the shale scree. Uh, you know, use the boundary sensor since we're just doing a traverse test. So, four versus two. Zero, so I succeed and I get four progress on it. Red challenge effect, so here, here, nothing. Over here, oh, add a harm. Okay, now here though, if this feature is within reach, shuffle it into the path deck and suffer an injury. <laughs> Alright, so this gets shuffled in. I gotta take a look. I think for injury, when I suffer an injury, I only have to... I think what happens is I put my fatigue stack into the discard pile, but it doesn't fatigue me more. So let me just make sure. Uh, injury 23... Injury. If a game effect injures your rangers, place a harm token on your roll card and discard all cards in your fatigue stack. For each uh, injury you suffer, you suffer one fatigue when you rest each round. Well, that's not going to matter because I am fatiguing out regardless. Alright, so that was that. Um, what other tests do I have? So I've got one on there. Question is, can I do another test? Uh, I've got spirit energy, which does me no good because there's no being to connect to. I guess I'm going to try to... I don't have any cards to draw, so I can't even do that. Shoot. Uh, there are... I have no energy to do any test anymore. Um, so my available tests are doing another sketch, but I have no awareness energy. Doing a traverse test, I have no fitness energy. Petting Uru, I have no fitness energy. Um... Yeah, I've got uh, I've got no test to do, so I can't uh, pull another challenge card and hope for a red crest. All right, well, at least I got a kind of a taste of what my next day is gonna be, and it's gonna be tricky. It's gonna be just doing a bunch of tests and hoping to draw the red crest challenge effect, because that's the only way 
that I'm going to be able to uh, open up the polyps to get the grubs to go into the nest. But I'm going to choose to rest. I would fatigue, but I have no cards to draw, so my day ends. All right. Well, that was day 11 of my Earthborn Rangers campaign. Uh, we are seeing if we can get our figure out what's going on with these reclaimers and uh, try to gather up some grubs tomorrow. So as always, thank you for watching. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you want to see more of this, Marvel Champions, maybe I'll do an Arkham game here sometime if I can figure out a good way to film it. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you saw anything I did wrong or I could have done differently or something else you want to see me play, either Earthborn, Marvel, different game, leave a comment below, let me know. Uh, otherwise, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.